Hello and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. So click that like and subscribe button because we're still in spooky season. I hope you've enjoyed it thus far. Uh, this is Karu, Karu, Karu Lake. Karu Lake. Uh, <laughs> you gotta watch the movie multiple times to be able to nail the pronunciation of this lake. Um, it is a Max release, and it's produced by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, he's actually producing a couple of directors who worked with him on Servant. Uh, this is their feature directorial debut, and he's helping elevate them. So I was interested. I'm intrigued. And I've seen this movie twice <laughs> as of this review. So um, it was something that struck me as being, huh. And then I gave it a pause, and I came back around to it. And I was like, huh. <laughs> it is... It's a little bit of a confounding question of a movie. In so much that... Does the twist make up for the movie? Um, is... Is the way I feel about the movie... Uh, dominated by the fact that I really enjoy... Ultimately the payoff? But I didn't enjoy the way I got there. I think it's a weird question to ask because it's it's so rare and now having seen this film twice and being able to go back through and analyze uh sort of where you know once you start seeing the reveals of things it's like does that work it actually does it's actually really really well crafted but I don't know why I kind of found the film very dry and slow and uh in the beginning like it was trying to uh, reveal to me the beauty of an onion, you know, peeling back layer for layer for layer. But it's like, if you don't like an onion, you know, you're sort of risking the experience of wasting the time on the onion. Um, as opposed to maybe like a rose where you have the petals on the outside and most people like flowers. So they're like, oh yeah. And you have the, the petals and they're like, this would make for one of those great scenes in a movie where there's a bunch of rose petals everywhere. <laughs> um, but nobody ever does that with onions. Um, but some people like onions. So do you like the onion or do you find this to be a rose? Uh, to two totally different smells, two totally different experiences. And I think that's what's going to happen with Kadu Lake. And I think that's why a lot of people uh, it, have sort of been... Uh, it, I would say on the map about this. <laughs> it has like a six point something on IMDb. It feels like a film that could have had more, but also feels like a film that people could reject because they typically seem to have adverse reactions to anything Shyamalan nowadays uh, that isn't related to the Unbreakable franchise. Uh, he hasn't s seemed to make a solid smash with audiences since I would say Split and Glass maybe. So, and he rarely produces. He rarely ever puts his name on a film. The last film he did that with was Devil. So, uh, the fact that he's willing to jump on board for producer for this should interest people, which is what interested me, which is what brought me to the film, which is why you're getting this review after even uh, the Salem Slot remake, because I was able to watch that one time and go, I think I see this film for what it is. Thank you. But this film is one of those films that you can sort of instantly recognize. I don't know that I say everything that you're trying to do here. I think there's craftsmanship happening. Uh, so let me check it out again. And that's rare to have that sort of experience with a film where you're like, ooh, I'd like to see this again. And I'd like to find out, did you, did you land this? So in my experience of seeing this film twice, I... I think the twist works. I think the way that they do this film works. It's really hard to tell you what it is and to explain it because once I do, um, it reveals a lot. I would just say it takes place uh, sort of with this family over a period of time. Uh, you sort of see this car accident sort of right at the beginning and uh, then you get to see this family and their experiences of living in this area and there's like a dam that's going up and you just sort of like learn these little 
things in and around Captain Lake uh, as sort of like the central figure and then someone goes missing and that turns into a, a thing but it's sort of it's it's it would be a film that would be very hard uh, to give you an accurate description of without revealing uh, a, a little bit of the deck. It's like playing poker, but showing one of your cards, you know? <laughs> You're like, well, we know he has the king of hearts. Uh, you know, I mean, like, that's, it's not really, you're, you're sort of at a disadvantage at that point. So, um, I think the acting is all fine here. I think Dylan O'Brien did a nice job. Um, but I did think it was kind of slow. I did both times I was watching it. And then when it gets to the point where they're like, by the way, uh, all is maybe not as it seems. Here's our, you know, here's our beginning to uh, twist, so to speak. Um, I think that is where the film is interesting. You know, I don't think the rest of it around it was necessarily. I wasn't f as pulled into these characters and into their lives as I should have been. I wasn't necessarily as invested. I didn't care as much about them. And that was after two viewings. I found myself kind of bored by them at the beginning of the film. This isn't one of those films that's like full of jump scares and monsters. And you know what I'm saying? There's not... Um, just like decapitated bodies everywhere. It's not your typical horror film. It's more of a thinker. It's more of a uh, film that you go through and you see uh, sort of, and horror is sort of redefined as what is horrifying to you. What, what could be scary to you without necessarily presenting itself as something that would be necessarily a monster that goes bump in the night or something that comes out and does, says boo, you know, and I, I get that. And there were episodes of Servant that I really loved. I really enjoyed the first season of Servant because it was really sort of unsettling. And I thought it landed with one hell of an end. And I think the, probably the biggest mistake Servant made was running as long as it did, because I'm not sure that it had necessarily the content and the range to run as long as it did. And I think when you started stretching that story out, that was sort of the problem, and that's the best thing I can say about Cabo Lake, is it's like, there's a season one of Servant in here, and it's really good. And then they just kind of built out from that, but when you build out from that, it's not necessarily as compelling. And then, but on the interior, there's something that's really cool there. So, do I want people to watch Cabo Lake? Uh, sure, I do, because I think everybody should have an opportunity to have an opinion and experience the rather interesting uh, sort of unexpected um, perspective that this film offers on its own twist. It's not something that is necessarily like, oh yeah, totally thought that was going to be how they were going to do this. You know, I didn't feel that either time. I felt like it was like, wow, so this is where we're going and I think the film plays it interestingly and well and then you get to the end and we get to the end and it's like not everybody dies and it's just like the world doesn't end and it doesn't it doesn't feel like your typical October horror movie either so um horror is, is very a stretch thriller is much a uh, is a much better comparison for this film so uh yeah it's on max and while it's not my favorite film of the year, um, and I much enjoyed sort of, even though I would say something like Cuckoo had a lot of the similar things the first time around where I was like, what is happening? Uh, I sort of enjoyed Cuckoo on its first watch more, even though, because I felt like it was going off the rails, but I knew where the rails were going and I didn't need it to be checked. You know what I'm saying? I could see that, that you know, there was no bridge ahead. <laughs> like, where, where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> Hang on! Um, here, it's like, you don't realize that things are going off the rails, and then they're, you're in the middle of it, and you're like, wait a minute, what? Where am I? Huh? What's happening? <laughs> and 
it's a totally different experience. And I think it's one that some people really enjoy, really jive with. Um, and other people may reject it. Uh, you know, some people think Shyamalan is just uh, a movie who bases his entire film around twists. I think that what's really funny here is he's picked up a movie that I would say is that, that has a phenomenal twist to it, but is the movie great? And it reminds me a lot of how I felt about The Village, which is like, okay, so the twist is cool, but I didn't like the movie, you know? <laughs> like, I... I respect the the twist at the end of the village because I didn't see it coming, but at the at the same time, um, I didn't I didn't enjoy the journey to get to it. So that's the best thing I can say about Kaudu Lake is I found it. I would say because the twist is not necessarily just like the last two minutes of the movie, like it is in the village, where it's like, oh yeah, by the way, this is how the movie ends, and you're like, well. That definitely was not worth it. Um, Kadu Lake actually starts pulling at at its twist earlier. So you're able to enjoy it for a longer period of time. Which is why I'm not going to just absolutely tank the grade and tell you not to watch it. Because it's not the same thing. But it does kind of feel like a film that hinges upon the twist. And asks you, did you enjoy the rest of the film? And I'm not sure as many people do or did or will. So... I'm interested to know what you think. So let me know in the comments. Uh, give me a shout out. And uh, be like, did I like Cadu Lake? Yes or no. It's been out for a few for a little bit. Uh, like I said, I sat on this review for a hot second. Uh, just to kind of get it out there. I, I did watch I did want to watch this twice. Um, I'm sorry this review is not more substantive in terms of, well, this is what the movie's about. Once you watch it, you'll be like, yeah, that is kind of a hard movie to not spoil um <laughs> it's like it is about a family and a history and there's oh, there's a lake and i mean there's things and you'll see uh if you want to, if you choose to watch it but uh at the end of the day i don't know that the twist completely saves the movie but the twist does make me want to lean slightly positive because in a world of would i recommend versus would i not recommend Thumbs up, thumbs down, fresh, rotten. You know, when we live in that kind of a world, I would marginally say, yeah, I think eh, I think you should check it out. You know, I mean, if it, it feels like you're interested in it, uh, there's a twist here, and it's worth exploring. So I'm going to give Kadu Lake a C+. Uh, it's not necessarily maybe the grade that they would have hoped for, but uh, I, I'm impressed by the the way that this is woven but it also feels like wool you know it feels like somebody instead of weaving a material that 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 would be you know nice and and smooth it feels a little abrasive and uh it's not the best experience so that's it cinematic wool Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys on the other side.